This morning for you on Daybreak, authorities in Taney County need to resume the search for two kayakers who went missing on Bull Creek yesterday. And several local communities come together in the aftermath of this week's severe weather to hopefully pick up the pieces of destruction. Plus, continuing a courageous conversation, asking how important are soft skills when it comes to landing a job? We'll explain about that and more coming up for you this morning. Well, good morning and thanks for joining us. It's Thursday, May 2nd. I'm Lauren Barnes. And I'm Joe Morano. A very active day yesterday. Hopefully, things a little bit calmer today throughout the Ozarks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, after we got off, I got on social media to see what the Ozarks were saying on Facebook and Twitter. And one thing I noticed is that some of the school districts that uh, were not in session were using their buses to help school districts that were, and vice versa, and, wow. you know, neighbors feeding neighbors and helping out when they could. So, you know, that's always the positive side is the yeah. Ozarks really rally together. Very refreshing to see that. I know, Elisa Rappa, you commented on some of that as well as you saw us out there reporting on some of these things after the aftermath of everything you told us. Yeah, you know, Nine tornado, tornadoes confirmed so far, and I expect that number to grow as they survey more damage. Um, and we've got, we've had lots of damage reports. You were in some of that yesterday, so yeah, it's nice to see everybody come together um, in the, that aftermath. Very good. So we're looking for a good start to this Thursday morning. What are we looking for? Those still flood warnings that people do need to watch out for. Still residual flooding because we dropped three to six inches of rain very quickly on Tuesday. So we've got aerial flood warnings continuing for our, most all of our Missouri counties until 11 a.m. because uh, we could still have that uh, river creek flooding. Uh, with more rain expected, flash flood watch is in effect until 7. So please don't uh, ever drive through standing water. We've got clouds in Springfield this morning. It's 66 degrees on west and southwest winds. We had a batch of storms pass to the south and east overnight. The more intense storms have exited. We do have some rain, though, lingering uh, from Springfield back down towards Lee Hill and Gainesville. And then a couple of storms are starting to get in uh, to the north and west from Butler and Clinton. Otherwise, not, uh, not seeing any severe weather out there this morning. It's 66 in Springfield, 59 in Brand and 63 in Mountain Grove. On and off wet roads through the day today with more rounds of showers and storms. We're looking at a temperature of uh, 68 by dismissal. Those storms, especially to the south and east, another severe threat to talk about. We'll do that coming up in 10 minutes. Making news now, authorities in Taney County will reorganize this morning to assess search options for two kayakers who went missing yesterday afternoon. Three people were kayaking on Bull Creek around 4 o'clock. That's when their kayaks capsized at a low water crossing. The group started in the water at Round Mountain Road. One was able to swim to shore and called 911, though it did take him two hours to find help. Crews spent yesterday searching along the banks at Shady Rapids Road, but were not able to launch a rescue boat safely. A helicopter was also used in the search. Two kayaks were found, but authorities say it's not a good sign. They think, oh, the water's up, let's go kayaking. Well, it's okay for the water to be up, but not when it's in flood stage and you don't know what debris is out there, and, and, and that's, that is a real, real problem. It makes it very dangerous. Now, the search will continue today. We'll point out to you, though, this morning, none of the people kayaking were wearing life jackets. Also happening around the Ozarks, cleanup continues from this week's storms, including out east in Douglas County at Star Chapel Church in Ava. They're picking up the pieces after a big oak tree crashed through their roof. The preacher's daughter, Crystal Johnson, says she arrived to the church the morning after the storms to find ceiling tiles sagging, limbs lying all over the place, and about seven trees uprooted. Everything back here has gotten wet, and it's still dripping. We're kind of just waiting for the insurance to come down and take a look at it so we can continue trying to clean up the mess. Now, she adds that the church canceled services last night, but get this, they plan to rally and hold their Sunday service. Another area hit hard by those storms was Ozark, with several organizations coming in to help out, including the Salvation Army, Convoy of Hope, and local churches from the area. Convoy of Hope's senior director for U.S. Disaster Services told us there's a lot of infrastructure damage to homes. With this storm, the immediate need is securing belongings and helping with that cleanup. Dining by Design also came out to help give out food to the victims. 
I live about a mile uh, east, and um, so, uh, you know, our family was kind of right in the line of it and everything. And so this morning, just thinking of these families, um, just do what you can. The Salvation Army is also serving lunch today for anyone impacted by the storm and also volunteers who are helping in those relief efforts. Bringing you some more local news, new numbers show most Springfield drivers are not stopping for pedestrians at crosswalks. The Public Works Department conducts crosswalk compliance studies throughout the year. The 2019 first quarter results show on average only about 25% of drivers yield to pedestrians at crosswalks, but some areas score well below the 25% average. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a lot of locations in Springfield where the crosswalk is well marked, and yet a lot of people don't stop. Sometimes as little as 8% of folks that will stop. Public Works recently received a MoDOT grant to take an educational safety campaign into local elementary schools to help the students understand how to safely use crosswalks and sidewalks. We continue a Courageous Conversation series this morning entitled Nobody's Business. When it comes to finding a job, most people agree that proficiency in a particular skill is important. But how much of a role do soft skills play in the workplace? That's like being on time, having the right attitude, and good communication. Color 10's Crystal Blair answers those questions in her report. Soft skills are usually personality driven. Being on time, having a good attitude, getting to work, a day's work for a day's pay. According to the National Soft Skills Association, it's believed that about 85% of workplace success is due to soft skills. Bill Smiley of the Missouri Job Center agrees that these skills are essential to landing a successful job. The number one thing we hear from employers is that. Uh, individuals today lack those soft skills. You can do things and, and even admit some things you don't know or you're not as proficient at, but I think if you can do it with some confidence and kindness, you can actually have um, a, a better reception from the client or the customer than if you come into it with a, a weakness in the area of a soft skill. Matt Hudson, Executive Dean for Career Technical and Community Development at OTC, says these skills are more important in certain jobs. I think when you're talking about a worker who is in an environment that's serving the public in whatever fashion, that customer service skill is probably the most important one they will have. So does this era of social media help or hinder when it comes to the development of soft job skills? You know, I, I think the cell phone and social media and all the instant communication, I call it instant gratification. However, Smiley says the so-called social media generation prefers a personal touch when job hunting. It's interesting that millennials tell us that they prefer a paper application over an online application because an online application, they can't look the computer in the eye and say, I'm special. Hire me. He says they believe so strongly in the necessity of soft job skills that they're teaching them in a class called Change 1000. We're trying to uh, change 1,000 people in the next two years with these job, uh, soft skill uh, training that, that employers are asking for. We're doing it because employers say, we need help. Donna Stansel says she has great hard skills for a clerical or administrative assistant job. Her strongest soft skill is one that many may not consider. Knowing what to say when and when to keep your mouth shut. Oh. <laughs> Stansel says working clerical jobs often means having access to confidential information. If you don't keep your mouth shut, word gets around and, and you're, not, you're not trusted or, or you're fired. <laughs> Jason Hickey is re-entering the workforce after being self-employed for many years. He says his greatest soft skill is enthusiasm. Being a self-starter, uh, independent, you know, self-employed, you know, through most of my life, one thing that that has been uh, driving force has been, yes, to be dedicated and be enthusiastic about whatever you're doing. According to the Balance Careers website, the three top soft skills employers want are positive attitude, strong work ethic, and excellent communication. In Branson, Crystal Blair, Ozarks First. We are continuing our Courageous Conversation series later this week. If you've missed any of them, you can catch up on all of our Nobody's Business stories on our website, OzarksFirst.com. We are just getting started this morning. Up next, we'll tell you which state is the first to ban styrofoam to-go containers. That's right. Your Money Watch is up next. 
from Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.